Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is April. I am a nurse practitioner, I work in primary care and I have for the last almost two years. It's been like a little over, I think a year and a half now. Um, now, sorry, I have been a nurse practitioner for almost two years, but I have worked in primary care for the last year. And I've been doing this segment about once a month on my channel that just goes over how I diagnose, treat, work up, kind of recognize these very common primary care conditions. And today we're gonna to talk about anemia. I just like to preface before we go over it that every system in the body is very, very complex. So this is a very general workup to help assist you in your studies as you're trying to create differential diagnosis. Um, but it is not meant to take the place of your lectures, um, your actual education. So as we jump into anemia today, please keep that in mind, but I'm so glad you're here. We are going to kind of talk through my process of anemias. So as always, I like to start off with kind of differentiating the types of anemias that we're dealing with. We're going to cover three main ones today. Your vitamin deficiency anemias, which you can think of as your iron deficiencies, your vitamin B12. We're also going to talk about anemia of chronic diseases. which when you're thinking of chronic diseases in anemia, I want you to think of disease processes like ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, um, and chronic kidney disease. Now, obviously there's a lot of other chronic diseases that could cause anemia, but those are just a few ones that I want you to keep at the top of your mind. And then the last one that we are going to briefly talk about is your hemolytic anemias. Now, hemolytic anemias, a anemia in which the red blood cells are being destroyed. So those are your sickle cell disease, your thalassemia, your G6PD deficiency, anemias, etc. We're going to briefly talk about these because a lot of times these are diagnosed in childhood and we are covering adult right now. I am a family nurse practitioner. Um, but we're going to keep this to kind of like your anemia of adulthood, but we'll briefly talk about some ways to recognize a hemolytic anemia. So obviously when you are looking for an anemia or when you're doing any type of workup in a primary care, you're going to start with the CBC, which is a part of your very basic blood panel. And a CBC is going to show you your white blood cell count, your red blood cell count, your hemoglobin, your hematocrit your MCV, your MCH, your MCHC, your reticulocyte count, and then a bunch of your white blood cell differentials, meaning like your absolute neutrophils, eosinophils, um, lymphocytes, all that type of stuff. When we're talking about anemias, we're really gonna focus right here. Your white blood cell, your white blood cell count differential is not gonna mean that much to you. And the only time that your white blood cell count should kind of trigger something to you is when it's low. A lot of times with autoimmune disorders, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, we will see a low white blood cell count. And if you see that coupled with these numbers being off as well, that's when I would immediately go to a anemia of chronic diseases. Let's break what these mean down. That way you get a better idea. Your red blood cells, your hemoglobin, your hematocrit are really going to change based on your gender. So males and females are going to be a little bit different. So we're going to talk about basic overviews when these are low, when these are high, what to think about. You should also know what most of these mean if you went to nursing school. Your white blood cell count, your red blood cells, hemoglobin, hematocrit. The MCV and MCHC are the two things that I don't think nursing school covers well and are a really big indicator of what type of anemia you are dealing with. So your MCV is your mean corpuscular volume. I like to think about this as the size of your red blood cell. Your MCHC is your mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. And I like to think about this as the color of your red blood cell. When you're looking at these numbers, this is what you need to know in order to differentiate between your vitamin anemias your anemia, and your anemias of chronic diseases. So with your MCV, if that number is low, 
then that means it is a microcytic anemia, meaning the size of your red blood cells is small. If this number is high, and typically around 80 to 100 is what you're looking at for your MCV. If this number is high, that is a macrocytic anemia. And that means that your red blood cells are large. This is really important. A microcytic anemia with small red blood cells is very consistent with iron deficiency anemia. A macrocytic anemia with large red blood cells is very consistent with a B12 deficiency or a folate deficiency, okay? It's kind of the same when you get to your mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. If the number is low, that means that you have a hypochromic anemia, so think pale, and that is consistent with iron deficiency anemia. I'm using IDA for iron deficiency anemia because it's quite hard to spell it out. And if the number is too high, that is consistent with a hyperchromic anemia. And a hyperchromic anemia is usually a B12 and or a folate deficiency. Now these numbers can be normal and you can still have a low red blood cell count, hemoglobin, and hematocrit. When that happens, it is a normocytic, normochromic anemia. And your normocytic, normochromic anemias are very consistent with your anemia of chronic diseases. Doesn't always happen like that because think of what we talked about. Your anemia of chronic diseases can be due to, to ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, and a lot of your iron is absorbed in the gut. So you can also have an iron deficiency anemia in ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Um, so whenever you're thinking about this, remember that there is no one size fits all when it comes to medicine. This is generally what we follow. I'm going to write this down for you in a better way so that you can take a screenshot of it and really kind of sit with this information because I know it's hard when you're first hearing it to really like compute it. Okay, so one more time I wrote it out. So hopefully this makes a bit more sense to you. If you learn what your MCV and your MCHC mean, I promise you this will make so much sense. So a microcytic hyperchromic anemia is very consistent with iron deficiency. A macrocytic hyperchromic anemia is very consistent with a B12 and or folate deficiency. And a normocytic normochromic anemia is very consistent with your chronic diseases such as chronic kidney disease because think your erythropoietin, which is, basic, which is the first step to making red blood cells, is produced in the kidneys. Um, and rheumatoid arthritis, things like that are very consistent with a, a normocytic, normochromic anemia. The next thing that I want you to look at when you are looking at a CBC is your reticulocyte count. I like to think of reticulocytes as baby red blood cells, and this is a really big indicator of when to be concerned for hemolytic anemia. If your reticulocyte count is super high, that is very consistent with a hemolytic anemia because it is an because they're usually having an autoimmune disorder that is attacking their red blood cells so their body is trying to create more red blood cells very quickly now this number can be off um, with even your iron deficiencies your b12 anemias etc but when it's very off that's when i want you to think about that you might have a hemolytic anemia on your hands and i would Go ahead and I would check vitamin B12 levels. I will I would check iron levels. Um, you can even if you have the if you have the opportunity do like a Coombs test or any type of sickle cell disease testing that your office might have, and then I would send them off to hematology because they're gonna need a further workup. It's also super important when you are thinking about um, hemolytic anemias to look at family history. Do they have a family history of sickle cell disease? Are they of Mediterranean descent, which is super common? Um, with thalassemias. So there are super types of thalassemias. We're not going to get into those um, because those are 
a little bit more advanced and we're not going to cover that. To get into what my thought process is when I see those type of labs. So say I get a hemoglobin and a hematocrit back that are low and I also get a low MCV and a low MCHC. Immediately my brain goes to an iron deficiency. So when I see that in a lab, your anemia panel shows me that you might be iron deficient are you losing blood from anywhere? The biggest indicators that you want to look out for iron deficiency are going to be loss of blood through the GI tract and loss of blood through menstruation for females. And then that will kind of decipher how you treat it. Everybody is different. Every office is different as far as protocols of when to give an iron infusion, when to supplement with iron. For me personally, and everybody is different, if they have if their hemoglobin is slightly low, I get an iron panel back and it's only a little bit low. Their TIBCs, which is their total iron binding capacity, is high. When you have a high total iron binding capacity, that means you have more availability. Um, so that's very consistent with an iron deficiency. Um, if it looks like that, a lot of times I will supplement with oral iron and recheck in a couple of months and see if the levels came back up. If the iron deficiency is very severe, and I expect that is due that it is due to menstruation, I will replace with an iron infusion. Um, depending on how bad the levels are, will be how often I do it, and then I will talk to the patient about birth control. You have to think about treating the cause of the iron deficiency, not just treating the deficiency. So, in a female. If the cause is a loss of blood through the female reproductive tract, how can we fix that? Can we get the patient on a birth control? Do they have a fibroid? You know, are there other things that we need to be looking at that are the cause of this type of iron deficiency? So always keep that in the back of your mind. And then when you are when you have the opposite, so say you get a low red blood cell count, a low hemoglobin count, and a low hematocrit count, but your MCV, your MCHC are high, and you're looking at more of a B12 or folate deficiency, why is there that deficiency? A lot of times it can be a lack of intrinsic factor in the gut. Did they have some type of bowel surgery? some type of weight loss surgery. A lot of times that can cause nutrition deficiencies because the, the stomach is smaller now and so they're not absorbing vitamins as well. Do they have follow any specific type of diet? Vegans, vegetarians should be on a B12 supplement usually because they're not getting it from animals because they don't eat them. Um, and folate deficiency, I like to think about alcohol and how much alcohol are they consuming because a macrocytic hyperchromic anemia can be very consistent with alcohol abuse. So especially if you get a CBC back and it's looking like a B12 folate deficiency and you have elevated AST and ALTs, then I would start to think about what is going on in the home. And this is what I mean by things get complicated. You know, it's never just this is what it is. It's how do we treat what is going on? So that is my first step. When I get back an abnormal CBC, I'm going to do more blood most of the time to look at iron, ferritin, total iron binding capacity, folate, B12 thing. That differentiates how I treat it. If it's a normocytic, normochromic anemia, which is very consistent, like I have said, with your anemia of chronic diseases or um, you know, your autoimmune diseases, your autoimmune diseases, those levels will improve when your autoimmune disease is better under control. If you have a patient coming in with a low white blood cell count and then the low hemoglobin hematocrit red blood cell count, but your MCV, MCHC are slightly off or you know normal, then and they've never been diagnosed with any autoimmune conditions, that's when I will do a workup, um, checking like um, a lot of your antibodies and then talking to your patient obviously about what are their symptoms. Are they having multiple joint pain? Are they having um, any type of redness, inflammation in any of the joints, like what is going on. So that's where it's all like your history that you take from the patient is so important because the body is so complex. If you have a B12, if you have a folate deficiency that are just solely based on diet, you can supplement those and recheck them in a couple of months and see where they are. Um, you can choose to do either IM B12 or oral B12. Folate is oral. That is a very basic overview of anemias and kind of my thought process when I have a patient coming in and I'm looking at their labs. Like I said, it obviously gets more complex and when I feel like I need the help of a hematologist, never be afraid to consult one. If you're looking at a CBC and it's looking kind of weird to you or you're treating an iron deficiency and the numbers aren't improving, 
do we need to send them to GI? Do they need to have an upper scope? Do they need to have a colonoscopy? Um, those are always things to be concerned about. Asking your patient, are you noticing any blood in the stool? Are your stools dark black tarry? Because then immediately I would send them to GI. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps. I know that was a lot, but I hope that helps you guys. If you have any other things that you want me to kind of talk to you about my thought process, the anatomy, a little bit about the physiology, let me know and I will do that in my next video. Bye guys.